behold, I give you the Commodore 64 and three quarters. So if you remember the silly little machine, this is the one we put in that little uh, address breakout thingy. And now we've uh, we got to do something with it. Got to see if it works. Find some use for it, even if it's pointless. At least it's something. So coming off of those three address lines there, uh, what were these? D100, 200, 300, right? Because D1000 is still running the VIC and everything like he's supposed to. So D1, 2, and 3, we've basically rigged up an AND gate to. It's three diodes in parallel. And got a little wire hanging off of it. So now we have 768 bytes. Not kilobytes, not megabytes, single bytes but 768 bytes of address space. And you could address whatever the hell you want with it. CIAs, PIAs, whatever you want. You can rig up to the thing. Just based out of parts I had around though, let's see if that'll focus. Uh, this is, I think it's an 8K. Yeah, it's an 8K SRAM chip. And we're gonna use a tiny little sliver of it. Um, so we have a little logic gate here. What was he? He was another 139, I think. I don't have my glasses on. But uh, yeah, that's another LS139. And we're just basically using this thing to control... Come on, focus, damn you. To control read-write. So we know when we could write to the memory and put it on the bus. And uh, output enable, right? You know, because when it goes into read mode, it also has to go to output enabled, but you don't want output enabled when something else is using the bus. So that's what that little 139 is doing there. So it's it's basically just remuxing the demux stuff, you know, with that AND gate we got going in. And yeah, so uh, without further ado, I guess I will plug this thing in and we'll do stupid tricks with it. But I really built this thing as like a little proof of concept. You could easily put a ROM chip here as well. And I had some half-baked ideas on what to do with that. But it's it's a gross waste of address space directly addressing memory with it. Um, you could put it through some kind of, uh, you know, ideally you'd have like an MMU or something, right? Or a serial parallel input out putty kind of thing. But this is just something I whipped up with crap I had laying around. So anyway, I'll uh, I'll pause here. We'll get this thing plugged in, and we'll do something silly. And don't worry about the Cat Five. I soldered onto the bottom of the CIA. That's a story for another day. All right. Well, let's see if this ridiculous thing still even works. It's been laying around the bench and getting knocked around the last few days. But if we load Pokeram, it's just a silly little basic program that will poke ones into the D100 space, twos into the D200 space, and threes into the D300 space. You know, real hardcore math here. So if we run that, and then we load show RAM, this will just print out everything in those ranges to the screen. So there's going to be 255 ones, well, 256 ones, 256 twos, and 256 threes. If the RAM's still working. Yeah, there's the two. Come on, little guy. Should have done this in machine language, but basic was quick and dirty and easy. And there's our threes, so won't belabor the point on that. But yeah, we have extended RAM space now. So what ridiculous things can we do with extended RAM space? All right, so I cut through all the terrible load times because stock kernel and blah. But anyway, this is Turbo Macro Pro. Um, you know, a little history here. I've been watching a ton of 8-bit um, uh, show and tell. Robin, uh, man, that guy, I've learned more from him about programming anything than... Probably anybody on the internet. That dude's awesome. Go check out his channel. But uh, anyway, this is that uh, that little one-line basic maze program, right? If you've ever watched any of his stuff, you've seen this before. And it's basically just uh, you know going down the, the list here. 
you know, dropping the uh, the character set in a Petsky mode, set a black background, um, and then start rotating the Petsky forward slash and backslash and flashing the border, right? So uh, he always compiles this program in a small area space. It's, it's actually cassette tape buffer memory. Uh, there's another section at 820 you can use. It's eight bytes wide. Um, this buffer is, I forget how big it is, but it ain't that big. Um, so our silly little cartridge in the back is probably just a little bigger than, than whatever the cassette buffer is. But at any rate, if we execute this, you know, it's just your, you know, little silly little maze thing, right? So we bust out of here, go back to Turbo Macro Pro. We can see that, uh, let's see, D100 is, uh, 53504 decimal and we go ahead and assemble there. Yep, there we go. D100 to D118. So itty bitty little program. We can run it. So what's the point of all this? Well, one, I just wanted to make a little cartridge to use this address space to see if it actually worked. Um, and it does. And the computer's stable with it in there. And most programs don't have any clue about that. So it's not going to cause any problems. Um, but what if you compiled this to a ROM and wired a ROM in that space and you could do a little kernel hack to have like F8 be a screensaver. You could put a, uh, a password in it that you have to type in to unlock the computer again or something like that. You know, that'll, you know, send an NMI on a key press and then go ahead and unlock the machine with a, a code or a pin or, or something silly like that. So, so yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was a neat little project to uh, to add on to our little decoder there just to kind of prove it worked. So anyway, I hope it spawns a thought with somebody and you could come up with you know better ideas and stupid little petsky tricks to uh, you know to plunk into that memory space. But uh, I just wanted to share. I thought it was kind of neat. So uh, yeah, let me know if you got ideas for you know doing something with that address space. Cause, uh, you know, part two of, you know, this will be a couple little quickie videos. Part two of this will be, uh, building this inside of a machine. So you're not burning the card slot. So anyway, that's that for now. Just thought I'd share and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what else we come up with. Take care everybody.